Definitely. Um, and if I, all right, here's a question for you. Would you, if you have um, two cliches mm-hmm. um, that you would follow, what would they be? What do you mean? Like, um, that's, that's like just two cliche sayings, like as far as um, just, just in life, I guess, maybe. Give me just one example. Like, like, let's think of like, um, what's a good cliche? Um, I can't think right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think. <laughs> like uh, what? Like lifestyle yeah. or talking about music and yeah, yeah. Uh, I was well. I was gonna like. I'm trying to think of an actual cliche to say. And it's funny oh, like a say. phrase or yeah, like a phrase. You know, like um, some like when life gives you lemons or stuff, stuff like that. Yeah. You know what what I mean? was some of your life name? Cliche. Yeah. Cliche. I mean, that's a hard one. I mean, I don't know. All right, that's <laughs> um, yeah. So, anyways, I was gonna backtrack again onto like the the Japanese rap. Um, well, I mean, I try to avoid cliches of anything. That's just my yeah. You know, but yeah. I mean, we live in a very sarcastic, humorous, mean generated world. Definitely. So it's like even cliches have dual, multiple connotations yeah you know what i mean so it's kind of all about insinuation you know yeah it's about kind of approaching things indirectly is how we communicate now right we don't we might not straight express something yeah so it's kind of everything is a cliche yeah to the point that you really don't know what you're talking about besides what you're referencing you know what i mean yeah so that's just kind of my take on it so uh, what's your stance like with social media now? And um, I was going to say using it towards like, um, you know, your platform, but instead I'm just going to say in general, uh, what's your take on like social media nowadays um, as far as like how it is for people and like mentally, you know what I mean? Of course. I mean, I think about that a lot too, as almost everybody else does because we are so influenced and tied to our phone and we're basically addicted to these small number of apps owned by a small number of corporations where you use a lot of the same devices and go on the same apps every day. And I think that's killing individuals. And I think it's very detrimental yeah. to our creativity. However, that's the only way we share information with each other. So it's like a double-edged sword. Yeah, you know I mean, like it's, yeah. it's a very dangerous tool. Yeah, that's what I think yeah. all the time because it's like, yeah, you can use it to so many for so many advantages, but then it's not being used. Yeah, but I think it's, it's just a balance, yeah. you know what I mean? So whether you share music online or you share music on Instagram or whatever, yeah, you just have to balance it out with, okay, maybe I will put out a real album and do a real tour. Yeah. If you share photos on Instagram, you might want to say, oh, maybe I will do a real exhibit or maybe I will print something and pass them out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's just a, you just got to have that balance between the real world, which we call the analog world, mm. and then the digital world, which is the virtual world. Yeah. So you can choose to stay on the virtual world the whole time, and the tools are available where you can basically live there, literally, and yeah. make money off of that. You can, but I think as a person, if you want to grow and experience new things and meet people, you kind of have to have a, have both yeah. going for you. And I'm, I'm saying that as a very so-called old school mentality you yeah. know because i think in the end there is no new or old it's just being based on like life pretty much you yeah, know what i mean just, that's the true school yeah. to base things on talent and merit yeah. rather than hype and just likes yeah definitely and like that's how a lot of people get their self-worth from that you know I yeah like i mean we just influence so much by external forces, you know yeah. what I mean? I mean, obviously a lot of effort went into building these constructs, yeah. such as the internet, such as the Instagram app and these tools, the devices that we use. There's a lot of energy that went into that. But okay. it's like, what are we contributing to that construct every single day? And what are you getting out of it is something we have to yeah. ask ourselves. It's true as well. You know um, what I'm saying? But yeah, going back on the music thing too, how big are you into like the DJ culture? What kind of DJ culture? Like, um, you know, like Three Styles and like um, DMC and like... Oh, I mean, I definitely pay attention to it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, 
Um, like, yeah, now the DMC champion is the youngest Japanese kid. Yeah, that um, he's the youngest um, since uh, A Track, I believe, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, that kid's crazy. <laughs> I was just like, I was like watching. Um, I mean, I've been I keep up sometimes watches IG videos or YouTube videos, and then I mean, also I think Yuto won a couple years ago at DMC as well too. So yeah, we jammed it, ran it too. The other yeah, day. it was fun. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. It was killing the fader board. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's crazy to see him because like. Um, I mean, recently we had an event this year with um, Craze earlier in the year, and mm. it's crazy just seeing him get on the turntables and do his thing. Oh, of but course. It's just yeah. like, um, you know, because like, you know, the hip hop got like, so I feel like in general, like you were saying, it's separated, like the graph, like, all the elements are like mm -hmm. so separated now, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's cool to like see a lot of people still trying to keep that culture. Of course. Alive I mean, if you go to certain parts of the world or if you actually go to a break event or a dj event it's a different world man. yeah you know? so i definitely try to still keep friends there and tap into that world as much as i can yeah you know but like i said my day-to-day -day life is more on a broader community yeah. realm also um i don't know i heard this i don't know if it's true but if you're you're like been in events breaking lately well just because i posted me doing certain <laughs> moves, it doesn't mean that i am but yeah. i'm always had a tremendous respect for that part. Yeah. And there's a guy named B-Boy Hijack back yeah. in Honolulu. He's still a young cat, very talented, and he's awesome at teaching too. So yeah, yeah. I'm I'm going to start training with him. Oh, dope, dope. But it's like, yeah. I have it, yeah. really. But also, like, contributing music to B-Boy events and stuff like that, I'm always hyped about it. Yeah. My DJ, everyone, he's always hyped about it. So, yeah, of course I have um, respect for the b-boys and b-girls yeah uh, and graph when you were drawing were you doing graph as well so i never went full-on aerosol mm -hmm. but i always had an appreciation again for hardcore you know graph and yeah you know, slattering but you know graffiti too has evolved and some parts have stayed the same but some parts have really really messed with influences outside mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, of what you call street art and yeah that's like a whole other conversation but you know what i mean like it's always good to be influenced by the things so you can bring that inspiration back to what you're doing instead of just staying within that yeah definitely um and i was going to use i was talking about the art like um with graph but like your um like album covers um how much of your thought process goes into like creating album covers like you really involved with oh yeah for sure yeah yeah I do, I do, and whether I, I pick pick the artist to work with or try to work with photographers or yeah, I definitely try my best. Yeah. But even though I'm kind of guilty of not really releasing twelve inches or albums as of late, just yeah. things just kind of come out on the internet. Yeah. But yeah, when you really take your time to think about what you want to put out, then yeah, yeah, it's it's a huge part of the creation. Yeah, definitely. I feel like it's like its own it's its own skill set and its own in itself too, because then. There's just so much creative freedom. It's like, what do I do? Yeah. You know? Yeah. But yeah. Same, same with the what, what I was talking about, photography and stuff. When you really put things to print, you know, it just yeah. takes a whole, whole other level of thought. Yeah. And then what hobby is taking up most of your time now, aside from if it's music, like aside from that, what, mm -hmm. what, other, what, other, what other hobbies like really taking up your time now? Well, like I mentioned, I make these resin pieces called wavy shakas. I've been mm -hmm, cutting stickers. I mean, I always cut stickers, but that's just yeah. one thing. So, and really music, you know, like just last week we had a screening with a surfer named Noah Mizuno. I did his uh, reel. That was really, really awesome. And yeah. Oh, another thing I want to ask is, um, I'm a fan of Samurai Shampoo, and I was wondering, <laughs> um, with that, like, um, like how, like how involved were you, or like you still, are you still have relations with a lot of the people that work you worked with, like? No, I no, I do not, because that was an offer made by New Javes for me to do the opening theme, mm -hmm. and really that was it. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So of course I would like to. Did yeah, you watch the? Whole yeah. Course. But that was, that came out two thousand four. Yeah. That was a long time ago for yeah. me. So it's kind of good. That's been like a whole following just off of that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So if anything, I'm sure majority of people in the States found out, found our music through that. And yeah, I would say even before listening to Love Sick or something like that. Yeah. So I definitely owe a lot to that whole project. Yeah. It definitely made us look good. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Because a lot of, yeah, like a lot of people would assume, oh, how did you get involved with 
you know, did you know somebody yeah. in the brand? Or, anything for yeah, you. or Cowboy Bebop. I'm a huge yeah. fan of that, and I meet so many people like that. Mm. Even, are, you, are you a fan of Cowboy Bebop? So, so even that, like, Dell turned me on to it, but I've never watched the entire thing um, or anything, you know what I mean? Uh, like, because I'm a, like I said before, taking bringing it back, I was more of a Tezuka fan. Um, okay. Very kind of old school in that way. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, I didn't watch all of the new school. Or to me, all of the new school anime. So, so classic anime. What's your what's in your top, like top three? So I mean, even anime, I'm not a huge, you know, connoisseur. But when I was in elementary school, so which I'm really glad I took part of that in Japan. Yeah, we had a golden age of what we call jump comics. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was like. Captain Tsubasa, which is the soccer, yeah, yeah. football anime. There's Kinnikuman, mm -hmm. you know, Dragon Ball, you know, and you name it, like Jojo and mm -hmm. all. To us, that was like the golden era of hip hop, right yeah, there. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? but anime the nineties, nineties yeah. manga based anime, yeah. and anime back then was still pretty crude. Yeah. So it wasn't really a thing that we looked forward to. It was more about the manga, yeah, culture. What about um, Ghibli? Are you a fan of Ghibli? Oh, of course. That, that that's that's automatic. Yeah. yeah, I love everything Ghibli. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean they. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> if anything, they took it to a whole another level. Yeah. Akira, Otomo, oh, Akira too, and well, Ghibli. Too. Those those guys are already like way beyond yeah. anything ever made. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, what do you think? Like, you take from like. American culture and Japanese culture and like you um, like use and apply to your life? Um, well, definitely coming from Japan, just be, because the Japanese way is really to treat traditional things and old things as already a part of your lifestyle. Yeah. It's, it's already a part. It's not something that you actively relearn. It's just already ingrained in our custom. Yeah. What we eat, what we do, what we believe. So just, you know, me being Japanese, we definitely have a tremendous respect because our history goes back centuries, you know? Yeah. So just having that and living, you know, kind of living in, in that environment and just knowing what people trust and believe in, that's just always going to be a part of me when I go back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because there's so many variety of lifestyles in Japan, whether it's in Tokyo or you go to that in the suburbs, it's very, very different. Yeah. Or my grandparents were from Kagoshima, Yakushima, mm -hmm. all the way in the South. So different worlds. Yeah. yeah. Know, Japan's made up of like 7,000 islands in more counting, if you count the smaller ones. Yeah. So you have a whole gamut. Yeah, and it was crazy because I felt like, because uh, I've, I've been a few times and I've got to go to different parts like Osaka, Kyoto, right. Uh, right. Hiroshima, Yokohama, like throughout, and each area is so different. Very but, different. Yeah. I mean, they speak different dialects. Yeah, the you dialect know? you can yeah. hear too. Very different. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty dope. So like, and also, um, if there's a, another country that you visited, which one out of all uh, out of places you visited that stands out the most to you, like culturally? I don't know about ranking anything. Not ranking, but of course, everywhere, everywhere that I've been, I've always learned so much, yeah. whether it's in Europe or Middle East or yeah. Africa. Or so, I went to Brazil one year. Mm -hmm. So, like, um, is there any off top that you could think of right away that, like, when you went there, you were like, man, I just had an uh, amazing time learning this, like, culture? Because, I mean, uh, I feel the same too when I travel because every place has something to offer. It's something oh, of learn. course, exactly. And, yeah. Um, was, yeah. Is there anything off the top where you're like maybe traveled the first time or second time, whatever, and then like you were like, man, I really enjoyed the experience here and like the culture? Well, like I said, you know, every place I go to, I enjoy it to the fullest. But for me, because I travel so much between US and Japan, mm -hmm. whenever I'm outside of an English speaking zone, it's always like challenging for me kind of rattles my brain a little more yeah you know what i mean so when i went to sao paulo or when i went to cairo or yeah. even parts of europe where they do not speak english and i'm complete foreigner lost in that environment i definitely learn and absorb a lot more yeah. 
you know, because you got to pay attention. People are just going to look at you and assume you're a certain country or assume they don't, you don't speak English. You know what I'm saying? So they're like, tell me ni hao or konnichiwa or, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and sometimes I have to, you know, educate them back. Like, yeah. Okay, I'm from yeah. States or, that's uh, actually, you know, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of a sad thing. Um, I have a story with in Europe when I was, um, I was talking with a German friend and we we're talking about, this is like prior to this election, this recent election, um, presidential election. And we're just talking about the state of like the world and like, you, you know, I was pretty in tune with like what's going on with politics wise and in the world. Cause like, you know, I try to stay updated mm -hmm. and it's, it's kind of sad that he was like, wow, for an American, you're educated on stuff like this, <laughs> you know? And like to think uh, as I travel, I'm like, well, there's already this um, assumption that oh yeah stereotypes. You know, yeah. But then like you're saying, you do have to educate. Like, hey, it's not all like this. Oh right, this is what right, of course. Yeah. And it's just about like as anywhere else you go. Yeah. Throughout the world, yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's funny to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of too. You know, yeah. it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny, but it's like sad. It's oh, exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like damn, but it's, it's more funny than sad. Though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, enjoyed my time with you this time. Mm -hmm. um, well, we gotta go over there sound check. Yeah, so, for um, Can you also let the people know what else you got going on, uh, where they can catch you, like as far as like social media or like anything else? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Come to Honolulu. That's where I'm at. Oh, there you go. Huh. No, I'm just kidding. Of course, you can <laughs> catch me anywhere uh, online, and you know. What have you? Just look me up. Look him up at Shingo Two Grand. Yeah, right? S H yeah. I N G zero two. Yeah, and my name will come up. Cool. All right, that's it. Thanks, Peace. man. Thank Appreciate you. It. Damn, that was up. That was all deep.